appreciate you being here today in God's house. It's been good already, hasn't it? Psalms that have been sung. Praise to God that has gone forth. It's been good. It's been good. I want to continue with what I started last week. I, I have never used this term in all the thousands and thousands of sermons that I have preached. I never used the term Bible power. I've used power, power of God's Word. But God just sort of made that real to me as a different way of approaching that. And I just really felt incredibly inspired to refer to the Word of God as Bible power. Yes. It's locked up. It's in this book here. This book represents unbelievable power. It changed my daughter's, two daughters' lives. It changed my, my father, who was 28 years old, never darkened the door of a church. He was a gambler, blackjack, poker, and pool. Made money doing that. He was a hard man. Some of his family owned the bars in St. Louis. That's where he hung around, bars. And when this book was open and he heard the words out of it, it changed our whole family tree forever. Amen. My brother became a minister. My brother-in-law became a minister. I became a minister. My father was a minister. I mean, it just changed everything. The, the Bible power changed our family and our tree, family tree. The book that has changed the world more than anything else. It has the power in that book to save your life. It has the power to save a nation. And it has. It has the power of a principle we call redemption and lift. If you talk to a missionary, you, you use that phrase, redemption and lift. They'll know what you're talking about. Because wherever the Bible goes into the world, wherever the Bible goes to people groups of the world, and the Bible is open and received, it, that community receives the redemption of God from the Word, and it lifts it up. Socially, economically, every way possible. To a people group of the world, the Bible goes in, and everything goes up. Socially, economically, everything changes. Where the Bible goes, everything is a lift. Everything's better. I mean, notice that everything's better in your life because the Bible came to your life. Yes. Bible power. And uh, Psalms 119, 160 says, The Word of God is true from the beginning. And in Hebrews 4.12, it is such a powerful verse. It's a loaded verse. I mean, I, it's so loaded that I had to just copy the 26th translation because i got to give you some stuff out of that. Of, of Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is quick and powerful. Everybody say amen. amen. Listen, let me give you some different translations of that first phrase. In one translation it says the Word of God is living and active. Way translation says the word of God is full of life and power. Another tra office translation says, for the word of God, for the logos of God is a living, active thing. Think about it. Williams translation of that first stanza says, for God's message is alive and full of power in action is William's translation. Trey, translation, for whatever God says to us is full of living power. For whatever proceeds out of the mouth of God is living power. Come on, for real. It's amazing. And then he goes on and Paul says, sharper than any two-edged sword or Moffat says, more cutting than any sword with a double edge. P. 
piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Amplified says, penetrating the dividing line of the breath of life, which is soul, and the immortal spirit. It has the ability and the power to probe in between what we can't even hardly understand ourselves. And the joint and marrow, the innermost intimacies of man's being, Phillips translation. It's the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Way he says it can discern the secret thoughts and purposes. Phillips translation, it exposes the very thoughts and motives of man's hearts. It has that ability to separate, to penetrate, to reveal to us what we sometimes don't even know what our thinking is concerning ourselves. Sometimes we don't even know why we do what we do until we open up this book and it reveals to us who we are and what we're thinking and what's going on in the innermost secrets of our being. It reveals those things. It's amazing. The Word of God, the book that has changed the world more than anything else. And that Psalms 119.89 one translation says, Your word, O Lord, endures forever. It is firm. It is firm as the heavens. Or the King James, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Verse 89 of 119. The whole chapter of 119 of Psalms is all about the teaching, the statute of the word, of the law of God. Now, in your notes, doubting God's word, doubting God's word, the Bible says, is the ultimate human mistake, born of rebellion and pride. Listen to me. Doubting God's word is the ultimate human mistake. Big mistake. Listen, it is the original sin. And Satan comes to Eve. Now, Satan says to so doubt. Now, did God really say that? And he's, he's been doing that all down through the centuries. Did God really say that, Jerry? He, he, Satan's always trying to so doubt to what God has said and what God has proclaimed. I have noticed on different social platforms where people that are in the in the know, people that we know in Hollywood or different places that don't believe in God, don't believe in the Bible, we kind of see that uh, portrayed sometimes in social media. And I look at them and think, hmm, big mistake. Big mistake. They may be famous. And they may have a lot of things in this world, but when they stand before God, and they will, Amen. and God will say, hey, I don't, I, well, I started in all these movies. Everybody loved my, my gift. God says, well, that's good, but I don't know who you are. Big mistake. Big mistake. Doubting God's word is the ultimate human mistake. Bible power has changed the world, has changed my life, has changed your life, and changed your family's life more than anything else. And I just made a list for you today. I just got so excited doing this over a period of the week. And then Johnny helped me get this for you so you could have it. Bible power promises we can experience God's divine nature. And I love the phraseology that God gave me to put this this way. I just love it. Bible power promises we can experience.
experience God's divine nature. And you know this verse of 2 Peter 1 4. Whereby are given unto us, everybody say us, exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, speaking of the divine nature of God. How many knows that we have experienced the divine nature of God? All things have passed away and all things have become new. And I told you before in the years past that everywhere in the Bible, in the New Testament, where you see the word us, we, and you, circle it and put your name beside it because that tells you who you are as a believer and it tells you what you have in Christ. And this is one of those verses. Whereby are given unto us. Circle it. Us. That's us, Randy. That's us. Exceed. How do I say exceed? Great. Is that what enough? Precious promises that we might be partakers one translation says that through them you might share in the divine nature. That through those words out of that Bible you may share in the divine nature of God. Bible, power, promises we can experience God's divine nature. Bible, power, promises pardon and converts us. In Acts 3.19 the portion says repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. How many are glad that we received a pardon? We have been pardoned by the judge. And that pardon means we have converted to the things of God and to who God is. Bible promises purity that cleanses giving them the Holy Ghost, purifying their hearts by faith, Acts 15, 89, a portion of that. Giving them the Holy Ghost, and notice what he said, purifying their hearts by faith. Bible promises purity that cleanses. Now like Psalms 119, 9, taking heed to God's word will cleanse a man's ways. Keep his life clean. And it actually comes in the form of a question. How will a man live a clean life? What can make a man cleanse his ways? Taking heed to God's word, verse 9, is answered by the question. So, this Bible is full of power and promises. We can experience God's divine nature. It promises that we can be pardoned, that we are converted. It promises purity, and the Word cleanses us. People that stay in the Word don't look at bad things and filthy things. If you stay in the Word, that's part of the research that was done. People that study the Word stay away from things that are not good. Bible power promises peace that calms. I mean, he's never experienced the calmness and peace that God promises. And Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Bible power promises that. Promises this peace that brings calm. There's times when we need that in the middle of the night and sometimes in the middle of the day we need to breathe the breath of God in and experience the peace of God to calm us to secure us to secure our hearts and our minds I mean, you ever had your imagination to get crazy on you start wondering all kind of crazy stuff and we say okay God now let me just breathe you in to my spirit. Let me just receive your word, your promise. And the peace of God shall keep your hearts and minds 
through Christ Jesus. By the power of promises, power that conquers. We shall receive power, the promise of the Bible said, when the Holy Spirit comes on us, Acts 1.8. Power to conquer, power for service, power to pray, power to study. How many knows that there is Bible power in studying the Word? You all of a sudden you're, you say, God, I'm going to read your Word today, and I need the Bible power to come and make it real to me. And it does. There's power for service, power for prayer, power for study, power to do God's work. Bible power promises the power of God's word is in our mouth. Everybody say amen. Deuteronomy 30 verse 14. The word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and heart that you may do it. I love that. Bible power promises the power of God's word is in our mouth. Now you're going to love this. One translation. Don't just hold on to your seat, Nancy Lee. It's good. Are you ready for this? This is so cool. The word of God it rises to our lips and it's printed on our memory. It rises to our lips and it's printed on our memory. One translation says, the word is very ready in your mouth and in your heart. How many knows there's times when you need the word of God rising to your lips? You need the word of God in your mouth and in your heart. Amen. Just at the right time. Come on. Bible power promises God's word is eternal. Come on. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Verse 35 and 24 of Matthew. The word of God lives and abides forever. Amen. Yes. Bible power on your back sheet promises God's word to be authentic. All scripture in 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Some of the translations says every verse, every scripture is God inspired or God breathed breath of God is the inspired word of God. For doctrine, for guidance, for education in righteousness, for refuting error or reproof or refuting error. I mean, there's a lot of stuff floating around out there that you need to put the word of God to it and say, oh, is this true or is it not? And he'll tell you. It's like a Geiger camera. Mm -hmm. You know? Is it true or is it not true? It's going to reveal it, right? Well, that's what he says. For doctrine, for refuting error, for giving guidance, for teaching us in righteousness. The Word of God is authentic. Amen. Aren't you glad we have something that we can hold our lives to? And know that it's real. My sister, Carol, is one funny girl. She's one of the oldest in the family. And she's 85 or 86 now. 86. And she still plays the piano at her church. And don't just play. She plays like fantastic. She's a great piano player. But she's so funny. She believed she should have been on television with all of her life, she says funny stuff all the time, and you don't even know she's saying it. She has this, she has all this costume jewelry. She, she likes to dress up. She's a dress up girl. And she's got these pretty rings, you know. But she, she always got to tell you, well, it's not really real. Yeah. She feels like she's got to tell you, it's not, I said, Carol, don't say it, it's not, it is real. It may not be a real, it's 
Jesus died, but it is real. But she's all that, but, 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 but it's not real. She's sure all this stuff, she's, but it's not really real. She kills me with that. But, but Carol, it is real. And it may not be a, a $50,000 diamond, but it is real. I've been fun with her on that. Aren't you, though? Aren't you glad that there's no question about it? This is real. This is real. It's Bible power. It's real. We believe in it. We live our lives by it. And we die by it. We live and die by it. We believe it. Bible power promises God's word is quick and powerful that we read in verse 12 already. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Bible power promises and declares the world's refrain. Listen, come on. I, I, I told you this is a new phrase for me, Bible power. This Bible power, the Bible says of itself, the world's came into existence by God's spoken word. In Colossians 1.17, I think it is, he says the world's it consists or hold together. The King James used the word consist. Everything in God consists or holds together. In other words, His spoken word is the materialization of matter. So, God says, earth be, and whatever He spoke out of His mouth, it became what it is. The world and matter is a materialization of God's spoken word. That's power, people. I mean, look tonight, if it's not too cloudy, look at them. They say you can see 2,000 stars with one glance. You may not be able to count them, but if it's a clear night, you can see at least 2,000. And you think, man, how did all this become what it is? It became because God spoke it. Now that's power, people. That is power. The Bible power promises and declares the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hebrews 11, 3. Faith enables us to see the worlds were put together in order at His command and His spoken word. Bible power promises and declares don't you like this one? He sent his word and healed them. Psalms 107, 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from dangers. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from dangers. Bible power promises and declares and makes it clear to us in Deuteronomy 8, 3 and in the New Testament, man shall not live, and Jesus quoted this at his temptation, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Bible promises declares that and makes that clear that we live by the words of God's mouth. We shall live by faith and by the word of God that proceeds out of his mouth. I was driving down the road. Joe was driving and I had my yellow pad. Some time back, not recently. And I was thinking about the word of God. And I'll tell you this. This, this little thing that I'm going to give you at the end came to me in a flash. I, had, I didn't have any of my study books. I had just a notepad, and I just started writing. And the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. And I wrote this real quick without even thinking as God inspired me while she was driving. Let the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, be that spiritual food that will sustain you. Be that knowledge that will teach you. Let the Word of God be that wisdom that will guide you. Let it be the truth that will keep you free. Let it be that weapon that will fight for you. Let it be that prophecy that will prepare you. 
and let it be that revelation that will awe you. I'm telling you, after I wrote this out on my yellow pen, I was beside myself. I think she almost went off the road. I was hollering so much. Look at that. Look at that. The spiritual food that will sustain us. Knowledge that will teach us. Wisdom that will guide us. Truth that will keep us free and make us free and keep us free. A weapon that will fight for you. A prophecy that will prepare you. We know that's important. And a revelation that will awe you. Let the word of God sustain you and let the power of God empower you. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's stand. I have the power. And now from now on, when you carry your Bible, it's like, you know, people got a holster in the way with that, that old six shooter in there. You know, you got you know, faith, you got works too. You, know? you got the faith, you got the works on your side of your, uh, there, you got that little holster. I, I, I have a quick draw holster. The only problem is I can't get around my waist now. <laughs> Any problem, but I have a quick draw holster and I used to go do shooting, quick draw shooting. And, uh, and we did that all the time. I took out the gun. Can't get the belt of it. But when you think about this word, you're carrying around something that's powerful. Powerful. This book changes the world. Changes lives. Changes families. Changes nations. Changes everything. Because it's alive. It's different than the other works of antiquity. I mean, there's great writings of Homer, great writings of Shakespeare. The only difference is when you open them up, they're not alive like this. This is alive. Powerful, quick, and powerful. Man, it ain't just a book. It's the power of God and the salvation. Let's worship God as we close and sing. Father, Thank you. 
Listen, the book of Hebrews, someone said, was written for those who doubt and for those who are intellectually honest. If you are having doubts, or if you are at least intellectually honest person, the book of Revelation is for you. He, in verse 12 of chapter 13, he urges brothers and sisters to take care that none of you may have an evil heart of unbelief and turn away from the living God. The, word, the book of Hebrews is so powerful, revealing God in creation in so many things. Know that God is active. God is strong. He preserves our faith. He vindicates us. And He leaves us full of joy. Amen? I'm very glad you've been vindicated. I'll tell you the truth. As Brother Ed said this morning, uh, we have a new justice that looks like He was vindicated. And let's pray for Him. Let's pray for all the leaders, state and federal. They need our prayers. I think that we are on the verge of a paradigm shift in our country that may be more towards righteousness eventually. And um, you better just hold on and buckle your seat there because there's some interesting things coming. Joe and I talked to some prophecy people Wednesday night before service. And they're, they're saying some dramatic things they believe God has revealed on what's coming. We need to stay alert. Keep our Bibles close at hand. Keep praying for our leaders. Whether you totally like them or agree with them, pray for them. And pray for our country to get back to God. Amen. We need it. We see things played out on television and we say, God, we need revival in this country. Amen. Let's come together and have a closing time of prayer. Amen. Yes.